Yes, we can see now. Okay, I will open up the screen in, uh, uh, in this board. Okay, today I'm going to talk about pollination and pollution of pigs. I think most of you know what pollination is. Pollination is basically <clears throat> the joining together of male and female uh, sexual parts in flowers. So we have uh, male flowers are called stamen and female flowers are called um, mm, carpal style, etc. And the pollen, which is the male part, is transferred to the female part. And once they meet together, a seed starts forming. And in order to disperse the seeds, uh, the, the plants have all kinds of mechanisms. And one mechanism is to create very edible type of fruits, which are tasty for animals and birds, etc. So that's one part. The second part, pollution, almost all of you know. Pollution is basically the unwanted ma uh, material in the environment. The environment could mean soil, water, air, etc. Here we are talking about mostly air and soil pollution, and uh, mostly due to agriculture uh, pesticides. And pigs refers to on uh, the fruit or uh, fruit types of certain type of trees. And here I'm going to go right into the presentation. So the first presentation shows Lord Buddha under a tree called Bodhi tree, uh, under which he gained his enlightenment called Nirvan in India. <clears throat> now the scientific name for this Bodhi tree, uh, which we call people in Nepal, is Ficus religiosa. So Ficus is a gen 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 genus name, Religious side the species name. And this is very famous from Buddha time. And we find it all over South uh, Asia, including Nepal. The other type of ficus, see, you have the same you know, ficus genus, but it is called Bengalensis. And the common name for this tree is called banyan tree. And this particular banyan tree is supposed to be the largest tree in the world. When you look up the largest tree, et cetera, often you get the tallest tree, which is Sequoia semi-parvens or California redwood, but this largest tree in terms of area. So you can see here's the road and very, very broad area. The question here is, how did the tree become so broad? And here is the answer. You can see the tree has not a lot of branches and a lot of, lot of roots, but some branches actually, these branches go to the soil and they form another new tree, another new trunk, and another new branch. So these type of branches are called prop roots. And as a result, from a central tree, we have more and more trees sort of spreading outside centripetally. So the next picture shows this happening. So this is all sort of children of the mother tree in the center, and it's spreading, 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 and that is why this is largest tree. So all of these trees are actually what is called vegetative reproduction. So there's no seeds involved, no sex involved. It is only the branch that turns into a root and from root it turns into a tree itself. Okay, so that's the largest tree in the world. Now, besides these famous trees, we also have many species of ficus, ficus which are extremely important to people of Nepal and India, but mostly I'm going to focus on people of Nepal, those who are living in the hill areas, and for those people who live in the hill areas, they are mostly farmers, 70, 80% are farmers, and they are very, very poor. That is, in order to increase their food production, they cannot buy artificial fertilizers, artificial food for animals, etc. They often have to rely on a combination of uh, crops and livestock. In livestock, they may have few cows, a uh, few goats, few sheep, few uh, pigs, some chickens and ducks, etc. But mostly you see goats uh, quite uh, freely available in the hill areas. And these goats provide meat in the Dasai season, which is coming now, but also milk uh, for uh, food, etc. Now, in order to provide food for them, you know, they cannot be given agriculture materials because agriculture production is very, very low. So they need to get leaves from trees. And these trees are found both on farmlands between uh, uh, small terraces that are called uh, terrace buns or in common lands and in forest lands, etc. So farmers go to these trees, cut down the leaves and feed the animals. Now among this, this is just one example. 
This example, we call it Pakhuri Nepali, but there are lots of species. So this Pakhuri is called Ficus semicordata, and it's one very popular type of fodder tree whose leaves are used to feed animals. And this uh, tree is especially useful because it, it has a profuse amount of a high quality uh, leaves in somewhat dry seasons of March, April, May, before the monsoon area when other uh, foliage is not available on the landscape. And uh, these trees are nutritious for lactating goats and animals, etc. So this is very useful for uh, the farmers and farmers' livestock. Now, besides the farmers and farmer livestock, the question here is, these trees are also useful for all kinds of ecosystem there. And in the ecosystem, we have not only the farm and farm animals, but we have a wild system. And in the wild system, we have birds and animals and bees and insects as well. Now, birds and animals and bees, they also feed feed on plants, but they also feed mostly on fruits. This is what a fruit looks like. Now this fruit uh, is called fig. It is, not, uh, it is not fruit in a strictly botanical sense, but this fruit is, um, is very, very sweet, very, very tasty, very, very sticky, etc. And you find a bunch of fruits, etc. Now the question is, we are all quite familiar with different forms of ficus, people, uh, uh, banyan burr, and sami, etc. But nobody has seen a ficus flower. But lots of people have seen what a ficus seed is because this is often sold in a marketplace as sweet stuff, and the seed is just like sand grain. Now all the seeds are inside, and the interesting thing is that all flowers, more, both male and female, are within this structure and is invisible to the naked eye. So the question is, when all the flowers are inside the structure. The question is, how big are the flowers? Where are the male flowers? Where are the female flowers? Where are the petals, etc.? We cannot see them. They are very, very tiny, and they exist in large numbers inside. And for them, there is one area where there's mostly male flowers, OK? And then there's one area where there's more female flowers. But even within that distance, there is a problem of transferring the male sexual uh, material called pollen from male flowers to female flowers. And this transfer is done by small, small hair-like insects, which are actually the babies of wasp. Now wasp is basically a type of uh, bee, and not type of bee, it's a family of bees. We're all quite familiar with honeybee, etc. So we are. We also have wasp, and we have bad name for wasp, like oringal, which is a hornet. Uh, but <clears throat> these type of wasps are not so big, <clears throat> very, very tiny. In fact, they are smaller than a needle here. And these wasps, uh, they can sense which of these uh, things are ready to be fertilized by this um, flower scent. And they go through these holes here, which are very, very narrow. These holes are called osteoles. And while they creep through these holes, you know, it's like a suicide for them. They may lose their antenna, they may lose their head, they may lose their wings, etc. And ultimately they die inside. But while doing so, Actually, they get in, and at the end of the tail, they have a very sharp injection like um, <clears throat> uh, uh, projection called, called uh, ovipositor. And from that positor, they lay their eggs, which are even tinier uh, than, than themselves. And these eggs hatch, and they, these larvae start eating up all the food and the good material inside the stuff. But while they move from one part to other part, mostly from male to female parts, they are taking the pollen together. So once the pollen is uh, transferred to the female part and they start developing, they, the seeds become ripe. And once the seeds become ripe, the seeds need to be dispersed. And in order to attract the dispersing agents like birds, <clears throat> they become very, very sweet, very, very sticky, very, very gooey like this. See, <clears throat> these are very, very sticky. And all of these sort of dark, dark colors are actual seeds. And all these bright red colors are very gooey, sticky materials. So when the birds eat them, they can either ingest them and drop them from place to place, but they even get stuck to their bills, their beaks, and they try to wipe their beaks and branches. And while wiping their beaks and branches, these seeds are transformed from one place to other, and they begin to life anew. So this is the life cycle. This is what the wasp is trying to go in a magnified dimension and see uh, the leg is torn apart and it is going inside. So the first part is the male parts, and they lay their eggs here, and it goes, it goes and 
uh, develops this way. So here's another picture of a life cycle. Here's the wasp inside the pig this way. It lays the egg. The egg starts growing up in the small larvae. And as it grows, it starts turning blacker and blacker. And it is also transformed into pollen. And finally, this is mature and it, it flies out and it begins the cycle again and again. This is the pollination of pig, okay? So here's the same picture again. Now, here is a microscopic uh, picture which has been expanded. And here are different wasp eggs in different stages of development. As they become more and more mature, they become blacker and blacker. And when they are finally mature, they break out of this place or the, or the uh, birds eat them up and they uh, disperse them, okay? Now, to give you an example how small they are, there is a needle and this is a needle hole. And even the mature wasp is smaller than a needle hole. And naturally, the baby, the uh, uh, larva is even smaller. And as they get more and more mature, it becomes blacker and blacker. And this is a long injection-like projection called ovipositor, by which it sort of get inside the place and start depositing the egg this way. So this is the history of a pollen. Now, towards the end of this projection, I'm going to give you a YouTube video which shows all of this in a much more larger type of microscopic uh, pictures, which you may see on your own. This is about nine minutes old, but I will not take part. Uh, I will not show it right here because I've been given only 20 minutes. And 20 minutes, I want to show you this picture of how I'm explaining this phenomenon to my students of uh, master's level mountain environment and development, which I've taken them to a small temple uh, east of Kathmandu, and this temple name is called Palancha Bhagwati. Okay, it's about 40 to 50 kilometers east of Kathmandu you know, on a small hillside here. And here is the uh, YouTube video. So I'm going to open up YouTube video this way. Uh, <clears throat> let me just open up YouTube video just a minute. Um, so um, uh, this one here, sorry. So this is a YouTube video. This is only about one and a half minutes here. And here I'm showing this temple in the background with Palantra Bhagavati. This tree is another type of ficus called ficus benjamina or Nepali name is Shami. And the peaks of the trees are very, very ripe and it's all yellow. And here I'm showing that it's very ripe and yellow, which means that the trees are healthy, the ecosystem is healthy because lots of uh, wasps have been available to fertilize them. If they were killed by pollution, they would not be fertilized and they would die. So here's just a one and a half minute. Let's watch this movie. Quote unquote, people tree uh -huh. of Palancho um, uh -huh. Bhagwati, but it's not really a people. It only belongs to the people family. Uh -huh. People uh -huh. family. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. <laughs> people family. It shows how popular I am with the students, okay? <laughs> For my first lecture, I got a candy. Don't see the video. Don't see that. <laughs> Don't take my. Come on, we cannot see the video, please. Once again. Yeah. Sorry. Please share the video. Let me just do. Uh, let me just do this uh, screen sharing one more time. Yes, please. Okay. Mm. Can you see the screen again? No, sir. Yes. No, no. We cannot see. You, you need to uh, screen share. Yeah, screen share. Here is screen share. Mm. Say the screen share is paused. Can you can you open it from your end? Um, just a minute. I, maybe I can show them uh, the link that you sent me from Messenger. Yeah, try this. Um, okay, I will try that one. Um, because you can uh, YouTube my right, sir. But you video any video could link to with our open by another mailing. Uh, Afno computer but open gonna try it again. So, I let's like open gonna thing. Uh, let's see, do you call the match? Let me go. Well, 
bangun tu ya juga dia cuci bangun juga tu ya tu. Oh. I cannot uh, find the 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 link. Can you send me again on my phone? Ah, the link is uh, yeah. The, the link is in the PowerPoint here. Yeah. The link is right under the tree called Summit Tree Field, right there. Uh, okay, I I found the link. Um, it's three minutes. Uh, this is one and a half minutes. The also is fine. The fig, uh, okay, I found one video. Can do you want me to show all the video? Three videos. There's one, two, three videos. Just show any one video. Okay. Um, there is three. So I'm going. I'm opening them all here. Okay, please continue showing. Let me see your screen. Uh, I don't know which one you want to show today. Uh, I have three videos. Uh, anyone. Okay, is this okay? This is Shami. And this the is the uh, Shami Fig. This one? Okay. Or this one? Yeah, this one, this one. Try this one. This one? Okay. Okay, we are now at the Palazzo of Bombati restaurant for our lunch break. And we are going to start the picking of our class. These are my students of forestry graduates in mountain environment and development school. So we are going to stop here for half an hour. And in the beginning, we saw a tree next to a police campus, next to the uh, temple which look like a fighter tree with not known species. So we downloaded the article from the internet and I'm hearing this ficus now. All of you look here, look at ficus. Ficus, this tree here, is actually not a fruit uh, by definition. It is actually a combination of fruit and each white spot there, you see there, right? Each white spot there, they are actually flowers. They are, they are, each of them are flowers and each of the flower has a male stamen and carbon included in that. Now the question is, this entire uh, metal is enclosed, okay, enclosed, and that is called a thing. And you went straight for an, um, birds and birds. Now, very interesting thing. From this fake, it tells a whole story. The, the story is that all of these figs are right and they're falling down, okay? What this is saying is that inside the fig, right, you look from like one small kid, come from close to the that was composite. One flower to one other flower. The pollen is taken from one place to other place. Who does that? Minute, minute wasp uh, babies, larvae. So they eat and they go to one place, they eat and wasp every day, and that way they fly. So wasp babies sort of inject their uh, eggs and baby, like injection there, and it grows and it eats inside there and it is fertilizing. So it's not self fertilizing, but it's cross fertilizing. Now, once that has been done, it goes big. Now, the birds uh, get broken down in spread. Now, the, an interesting story is that in many parts of Nepal, when there is agriculture going on, more and more people are being used pesticides. And when pesticides are being used, the bees, the wasps, they, they get uh, always desert. And when the bees, uh, when the bees and wasps no longer can lay food while the eggs, then these fruits will not be fertilized. So it will not be dropped. Okay, and that way you would have not good uh, not good uh, fertilizer. Okay. Now the fact that we see huge amount of uh, such food falling down in fertilizer means this ecosystem is relatively healthy. That is not too much so and Dr. Nasani just should not have a good cell, right? Pila Pila man should make it and the basket. Go to for a very long time. Thank you, Asta. Now, can I go into the PowerPoint again? Uh, yes. Um, just a bit. Okay. Um, please start. Okay, let me go to PowerPoint again. So, let um, can you see the PowerPoint now? Yes. 
Okay, so in the uh, in the uh, small uh, three minute video, the point I was making was that since we find plenty of uh, peaks of Shami tree uh, in Palancho Bhagwati area, that is evidence that the pollution is not so bad as we think it is. And we are now talking about uh, pollution in agriculture due to pesticides. And this is only 1000 feet above the valley of Pascal, which is among the most highly developed agriculture area in the middle sub area. And there's so much pesticide used in that area that farmers themselves admit that they use five times more pesticide for vegetables they sell to Kathmandu than they use for themselves. And there is documented case of lots of birth defects due to um, high amount of pesticides, but it has not affected the bees and wasp uh, population that uh, the fig production is less. Now, just to give you a background, let me show you the area of, um, area I'm talking about, okay? So, so let me see, uh, is this map visible? Yes. So uh, assuming <clears throat> most, some of you who may not know where, where Nepal is, so Nepal is uh, located in South Asia. This is India, this is uh, China, and this, uh, this is south of uh, China, north of India. And the next picture shows the Nepal boundary here. And in Nepal boundary, Kathmandu is somewhat in the center, and it's in the hill area. All of these are hill areas. And this light green are the plain areas, or tropical areas, OK? <clears throat> here is the Kathmandu Valley. And all of these dark colors are they're all hill areas between seven to 9,000 feet. Uh, mountains and most of them have forest in it. Of course, the flat areas are all uh, valley areas and lots of urbanization, lots of agriculture there. But these uh, flat areas are about 4,500 feet above sea level or approximately 1,500 meter, meter above sea level. So it's not tropical, it's quite cool climate, okay? Whereas the place where I show the temple is called Palancho Bhagwati Temple, which is uh, sort of east of uh, Kathmandu and this small yellow place is where my house is located. And what I want to show is that while you while you go from Kathmandu, Kathmandu Valley here, which is sort of light colored because of a lot of urbanization, here we have a smaller valley, which is very dark uh, green. And this valley is called Patskal Valley. But this valley is actually lower than Kathmandu. And this is mostly around 2,500 feet uh, above sea level or 850 meters. And because it is lower, there's a lot of agriculture development and the government of Nepal has invested a lot of agriculture technology. So huge amount of agriculture production and mostly vegetable production is sold to Kathmandu here. And since they have been uh, increasing the production, in order to maintain the production, they have been using more and more pesticides as I just told you. Now let's, let's show you a picture of uh, uh, the connection between my house to Palancho in this next picture here. So here is the actual uh, roadway connection from my house to Palancho. And I'm now going to go into Google Earth uh, picture. So Asta, please help me uh, to see if the Google Earth picture which I'm going to post is uh, available to share, okay? So here I'm going to go to uh, Google Earth picture now. Mm. So here it is. And um, do you see the picture? Yes, we can see. Uh, Muli, sir, also, uh, if we can make it a little bit shorter uh, because of time limit. Okay, I'll, I'll try to complete this one, okay? So mm -hmm. this, this uh, my house in Kathmandu Valley is, is right here, okay? So if you take this right here, this is Kathmandu Valley, around 1,300 meters. And this Palancho Valley is right here, okay? Right here, this around uh, 11.65 meters. And the bottom part, Right, this bottom part is eight feet. Okay, so here is the agriculture part. Okay, now let me so let me just finish it, and I'm going to. Um, so this is the river of Chikukola in the Palancho Valley, which is. Sorry, uh, can you see that again? Uh, please share once again. We're back to uh, the screen. Powerful. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, this is the river of uh, uh, Pascal Valley, and this is the river that drains the entire valley area. And the next picture is the Pascal Valley from the Palancho uh, Hill area. And, and this is the valley itself, and this nice dark line is the actual river there. And this is lower than this is where a lot of agriculture. So, my main point I'm making is that 
despite the huge amount of development we had, the views on agriculture, production, pesticide, uh, which does affect the people there, this pesticide has not affected trees in this uh, industry area. So that is the conclusion of my talk. And last part I want to show is that those of you who are, who are interested in seeing the actual thick poll pollination better, here is a link, link to that page, and you may watch this uh, uh, picture in a much greater detail. So thank you for the time, and I hope you enjoyed and uh, learned a little bit about thick and pollination as a, a real issue of uh, conservation and biodiversity development in Nepal. Thank you. That's the end. Thank you, sir. Um, I was uh, making Japanese translations for you all in the chat box. So, uh, sir was talking uh, in his normal speed and my fingers are also moving <laughs> very fast. So, um, thank you so much, Amuli, sir. And uh, from, the, from your presentation, we can, uh, we can learn two things uh, today. So, this is like short revision. Uh, first thing is the fig. Hamle is like onzir banjo. Nihongo de ichijiku banjo. Hey, yes, ko chaini itherei ne mahato cha. Hamro banaspati ho. The nettai urin. Hey na hamle chay rainforest. Hey na maapani yo fig banne yo prajati. Hey na kono fig to yo. Ichijiku no shurui, yase ichijiku no shurui to you no wa, sebutsu no tayo se no tabeni ichiban daiji. Then I use any bondage on to a really cane zun be, sano yota polo. You tiny two poly is a polena bonita, subways on to like a esco or sort porta, bonnetani, oily scientist, rubig, boganic, lit hapai. But as a cosor cucura tiny esco pol lagno colagi, yota sano. You are a busuna dos to kida, co motto cotti raisata. You took kida tia bitra goera, tell it kun, I know tell it any fertilization gordena bonnet to pol the pol dina. The eutas ambro procritic man, balance gorno colagi, eutasano busuna cotti motto raisa. Tara aza amile, pats cal bandizun towns at your tiny, pats cal to you nova, mo nepadu deva, mo satuzaio maki, sugi. Pats call Pats call to you Kavre Kavre Gunno Pats call Pats call is an area where uh, pesticides are used five times. And even the farmers, you know, they agree that using pesticide is not good, but they want to sell their vegetable in Kathmandu. And that's why they are using five times more pesticide. And because of the pesticide, the effect is on our nature, on the little wasp that our sensei, uh, Amule sensei told today. Okay, so please remember that uh, Ichijiku Kobachi, okay, the little wasp name in Japanese is Ichijiku Kobachi, or in uh, English, it is the little uh, fig wasp. It cannot uh, fertilize any other fruit. So the wasp need this tree and this tree need the wasp. Okay, thank you. Um, Sensei, um, Amuli Sensei, thank you so much. Next is we want uh, Miss Diksha Maharjan to give her presentation. It is about seven types of medicinal plants of Nepal. Please, Diksha. Uh, can I share my screen, ma'am? Yes, uh, Amuli sir, you, you, uh, I think you can screen, uh, try to share on the screen. Mm -hmm. Amuli sir, if you can finish this, uh, this uh, slideshow. Thank you. Uh, um, that I'm leaving. Yeah, please tell us about the seven uh, important herbs of Nepal. So, also tell us is about yourself. Screen visible there? We, we, we are trying, it's trying to open. We cannot see yet. Okay, so 
If your connection is bad, I can open it for you. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, because you okay. sent me, right? You sent me uh, yes. that file. So I will, I will open it for her. Mm. Okay, so teacher, you can uh, tell me where to stop, okay? Okay, ma'am. Okay, um, so I already put it here on private YouTube screen. So first of all, Namaste and Konnichiwa to everybody present here. My name is Dixia Maharajan and I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's study from Mahindra Ratna Campus, Ilam, Nepal. So today, uh, my present, uh, short presentation is on medicinal plants of Nepal with economical value. So as we all know, what is medicinal plants? It's basically uh, herbs, uh, plants, which has been used from prehistoric time uh, for curing different uh, disease, maladies, and as it contains many more chemicals and uh, phytochemicals, which helps to fight against this disease microorganism. Uh, so uh, these are some medicinal plants, uh, which are used uh, use from um, prehistoric time till now for curing some of the disease. Uh, can we go to the next uh, slide, ma'am? Yes. So I have included, there are many more medicinal herbs in Nepal. I have included uh, seven herbs uh, among this. Uh, this is the Chiraito. Uh, it is called Chiraito in Nepali. Its English name is Chiraita and it is called Senburi in Japanese. So the part, so uh, this plant is grown above 1800 meter of sea level in Nepal. It is mainly found in the Northern East part of our country Nepal uh, and the uh, whole plant is used for uh, medicinal purpose and it have some health benefits like it helps to protect the liver as it consists of hepato, uh, hepatoprotective um, properties. It helps in skin care, it checks the sugar level so it helps to maintain the di diabetes. Ma'am, I haven't finished uh, all you, all you are going yet. So it helps in liver, anti-cancer, anemia, and anti-parasites. And it have other properties like curing the fever, bronchi uh, bronchial asthma. So our another, another um, medicinal herb is, ma'am, you can go to, uh, so this is Sarpaganda. It is called Sarpaganda in Nepali. And its snake root is its English name. And Indo Shabaku, it is called it Indo Shabaku in Japanese. It is called Paganda as it has the root which has the appearance of a cold snake. So it is named after that. Its scientific name is Rolfia serpentina and it is uh, its part which is used for medicinal uh, value is its root. And this is the uh, plant uh, contains uh, flowers and fruit of serpentina, sorry, uh, Rolfia serpentina. Ma'am, can you go to the next slide? Hello? Am I audible? Yes. So uh, the health benefits of surf surfaganda are it helps to improve our digestive system as it has many phytochemicals like serpentinine, serpentine, reserpentine. So it helps. Uh, to have relief from uh, air, it has to eating and irregular means and also helps in reducing the weight and uh, curing the cold. So other proper medicinal properties are uh, it, it, it is traditionally used for diet and nervous disorder. So the third one medicinal plant is tricky ash, which is called it in uh, English name. It's in English name, Timur, it's Nepali name. And Ryo 
Shinshin. It's Japanese name. So it's scientifically one pepper, and the part used for its medicinal value is fruit. This is a plant, a young plant with flowers, and uh, the picture B is of an unripe fruit, and when it is ripe, it looks like uh, red berries in the third picture. So the, um, ma'am, can we get to the next slide? Second, okay. So the uh, health benefits we get from this Timur pepper, which is mostly used as uh, ingredient for the uh, Nepalese cuisine. Uh, it co uh, consists of an iron, which helps to boost the circulation. And it consists of in many antioxidants, as, uh, which helps to subdue the fl inflammation, helps to strength, strengthen our immune system, as it consists of zinc, and um, speed up our metabolism, and also helps to bring a uh, build of strong bones, as it contains phosphorus and manganese. And other chemical, other uh, medical values it uh, it carry is it helps in a headache also. So our next uh, medicinal plant is, can we have the next slide, ma'am? Bojo, it is, uh, Bojo is a Nepali name and it's called Vacha in Sanskrit name. It's a Sanskrit name and sweet flag as a common or English name. So uh, scientific name uh, of this plant is Acromus calamus. And this is the plant, green, uh, green plant with this spadix, it is its uh, flower. And uh, other side of uh, this plant, is this picture, it is a dried root. Uh, which is in uh, dried rhizomes of this plants, which is actually used as a, um, a medis uh, medicine. So can we get to the next uh, next slide? Okay, it's taking some time to change. Okay, ma'am. So the health benefit of a sweet flag, vacha, are it helps in... Uh, in childbirth, as it induces some, it have some phytochemicals which induce the uterine contraction during the childbirth and uh, make it easy for, uh, during the childbirth. Uh, it helps to maintain the healthy stomach. It helps to prevent the infection, inflammation, and it all the oil of this uh, sweet flag also helps to prevent the hair lice and other. Uh, it is very good for the wound in the neck or for the Throat, a good throat condition, and it also helps in uh, during the speech. It also fights depression, epilepsy, and boosting the memory. It is also used for the common cold and dysentery. Can we have the next slide, ma'am? So this is a uh, spike nard jatamasi. Uh, it is called jatamasi because the uh, part which is used for the medicinal value, uh, root, uh, it consists of in many hairs, which is uh, in Nepali called jata. So on the basis of its appearance, it is called jatamasi. And scientific name of this plant is no, uh, no, Nardostachys jatamasi. The plant, which is uh, the part which is used for a medicinal value are rhizome and roots. And the health benefits and the health benefits of Zatamasi are it helps in skin care, it, uh, it acts as a nerve relaxing element, it helps, in, in, uh, it helps to people having insomnia, it helps, uh, it helps to lower the blood pressure, it is good for laxative, uh, helps in constipation, for, uh, it is good for our ureters, bacteria infection. Other than this, it also cures the gastritis and anemia. So, uh, this is our last, uh, last medicinal plant. It is called Himalayan Mars Orchid. It is called Pants Only in Nepali, which means five fingers, as its rhizome, which is used as a medicinal part, is uh, look like five fingers. So it is named after that. And its uh, scientific name is Dactyl, uh, Dactyloriza hategeria. It is grown above uh, in between 3000 meter to 4000 meter above sea level in Nepal in the eastern part. And the health benefits it have are, it helps in chronic fever, it helps to cure cough, it helps to cure stomach 
एक डिसेंट्री डायरिया आल्सो हील द बोन फ्रैक्चर्स एंड हील द बोन बोन एरियाज सो अदर देन दिस इट इट इज यूज इन जनरल वीकनेस सो दिस आर सम some medicinal plants and along their uses which are been used traditionally in nepal thank you okay diksha what do you want to do in future after you uh, graduate from ilam from mahindratna campus um mm, i uh, i want to do entomology masters in entomology ma'am entomology is insects isn't it yes ma'am Okay, so uh, did you did you find Amulya sir's uh, presentation today interesting? Yes, ma'am. It was very uh, knowledgeable and fruitful for me because I haven't heard that that type of pollination and the scrosses uh, inside the fig plant. Uh, that was very surprising for me as well. <laughs> and I would like to thank uh, Mr. Amulya Tuladar sir. Okay. And for you to present this platform me for uh, today. Okay, thank you, Diksha. Thank you so much, uh, everybody here today. Uh, what do you think about these two presentations? Please give your feedback. Uh, you can ask the the presenters. Uh, you can give your comment. Anything is fine. Um, anybody wants to, uh, please hold down your space bar and you can speak. presentation, especially uh, the other student who is here, right? Um, यहाँ हर्बल को मेडिसिन चाहिँ राम्रो बनाएर इटाली सप्लाई गर्नुहुन्छ तर यो नानीले प्रेजेन्टेसन हामी चाहिँ बच्चा मात्र हैन हाम्रो गाउँतिर चिरैति बेच्न ल्याउँथे के माथिबाट अब यो कुरा चाहिँ नि अहिले चाहिँ नानीले भन्दैछ यहाँ टिपियो यिनको औषधि चाहिँ नि अब त्यो माथि पहाडतिर हाम्रो जग्गामा पाउँछ यो चिरैति धेरै पाउँछ यो अलि अलि लेकमा पाउँछ यो चिरैति तल तल तहमा हुँदैन यो त्यो पाँच औँले इनीहरु यो गोसाई कुण्ड साइडतिर गोल्फु चिसा पानी थाडे घोप्टे यो चाहिँ माथि माथि यो हाइटमा मात्रै हुन्छ हस् हजुर सारै राम्रो लाग्यो ओके एन्ड थ्याङ्क यु शिवजी व्हाट अबाउट जुनिता जुनिता इज हियर हिरोमी सान सुनेको सान यु आर राइटिंग योर कमेन्ट्स बट इफ यु क्यान गिभ सम कमेन्ट हिरोमी सान व्हाट डू यु थिंक Okay. All right. So um, the purpose. Ah. Uh, okay. Yes. Did you raise your hand? Okay. All right. Um. So next week. Okay. Next week uh, is twenty fourth October. We will have our uh, next session. During that time, we will learn some new things. But let me give a short review. Okay. So today we had two presentations. The first presentation was about the figs, the pollination, and how pollution is affecting the figs, especially the wasp. And the second presentation was about seven different types of medicinal plants. And uh, Dikcha here, do you is there a particular reason why you selected these seven uh, species? I uh, selected these seven because these have the higher potential, export potential. Uh, these are the higher, uh, high export potential uh, fat. Uh, a medicinal herbs that is grown in nepal yes but uh, you know next time when you give a presentation like this it's my suggestion is what is the product that uh, we can make right is it in okay, a powder phase is it oh, yeah. in an oil phase essential oil phase because in japan these days the uh, aromatherapy is very popular and there is a lot of spas you know like people like young girls right when they go out to get a spa they have oil massage 
you know, to relax the body. So uh, from Nepal, uh, right now, winter green is being exported to America for good price. And for a small bottle, you know, it costs a lot. And uh, this comparatively, our uh, Sancho, yeah, our Sancho in, in yes. Nepal, yeah, Sancho by name, Pinesa, it is so cheap, isn't it? Anybody in Nepal can buy the Sancho for very cheap. And the same thing we are exporting, other people are exporting, it's very expensive. So after hearing about medicinal herbs, I respect the Sancho a lot. Uh, and when I come to Japan, I bring lots of sanzo from many uh, for my for my friends in Japan, and they really like it. So if I ever get to meet, right, uh, I will uh, giving gift as souvenir. Uh, sanzo is very very um, appreciable, or people appreciate it. Yeah, it's like that. I really love the aroma therapies. I uh, also, mm -hmm. and I really interested in um, Jatamanji, mm -hmm. Jatamanji oil. I ha I got two years ago mm -hmm. in France. I see. But uh, I'm I found that from Nepal mm -hmm. on the bottom. Yes. So a big surprise. <laughs> I got France yes. Nepali oil. You so, will chance to know about Nepal. <laughs> It's really interesting thing. People who come to Nepal, you know, they have a new discovery in Nepal. Yeah. New discovery. So mm -hmm. Nepal is full of surprises, right? Even if, yeah. even if you know you are living in Nepal, Nepal has lots of diversity and there may be many, many herbs, many, many types of animals that are being newly discovered. Can yeah. you even in Japan, right, under the deep ocean, people are, you know, doing research these days, like Shinkai, uh, Shinkai no Dobutsu, right? So the world is still full of lots of mysteries, lots of, lots of discoveries yet to be made. Saying this, I want to say thank you again to Amulya Dr. Amulya Ratnatuladar and uh, Ms. Uh, Diksha Maharjan and everybody present here. Please come back again next week, Saturday night, 5.15 Nepal time, 8.30 Japan time. And let's have continue this, ex this uh, conversation again. Once again, thank you everybody and see you again the next Zoom. If anybody wants to say something in the in the at the last moment. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sapela Namaste. Peri Betonla. Peri Betonla. Moka me the peri betonla. The host. मैले तपाईले जुन गरिको भने कविता लेखा छ म पठाइदिन्छु तपाईलाई है यो कविता पढ्नु भए पनि हुन्छ है नेक्स्ट टाइम हो ल रेडी गरेर पठाइदिनुस् पहिला हैन पहिले पठाइदिराख्नुस् अनि त्यसपछि चाहिँ पढ्नु भए पनि हुन्छ आज चाहिँ यो 10 बजेकोले क्रस गरे ल ल ठीक छ नि हो नि ल अर्को चाहिँ म पठाइदिन्छु तपाईलाई यो साधारण नर्मल बच्चाले जस्तो देखदिया छु मैले हजुरले पठाइदिन्छु अनि तपाईले उ गर्दिनु हस् अहिले तपाईले त्यो जुन किरि ज्याउ किरि किन राए लखेटेर भगायो कि त्यसै डराए भनेर मैले लेख्दै आके ए हजुर हजुर त्यो चाहिँ नि अझै पनि त्यसलाई अलिकति दुई तीन नोट लेखेर पठाइदिनु भयो हैन भ्यागु भ्यागुताको ट्यार र ट्यार पनि सुन्न छोडियो बिस्तारै हामीहरु अब कता मोडियो वाह आली कानला मासिएर कुलो हरायो पिडी आंगन छैन अब त्यसै डरायो Oh, you're a little bit of 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 a little bit